Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another causal inference struggle. In the last instrumental variable video, we talked about compliers, never takers, always takers, and defiers. But I want to spend a little more time and go a little more into depth about what each of these types of people mean and how they affect an IV estimate. These four types of people don't just appear in IVs, they also appear in regression discontinuities. They also appear in randomized control trials, but we're going to focus today on how they relate to an IV estimate. Particularly, we'll talk about some key characteristics of each of these types of people so that you can tell them apart, talk about how you might be able to calculate the percentage of people in a population that are of each type, and specific to IV, we'll talk about how defiers can sort of mess up your IV estimate. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get right into it. In that video on instrumental variables, we had a setup where we had an instrument the instrument was getting your name picked out of the hat for a lottery to be able to adopt a cat. Your X variable was your treatment, and that's whether or not you adopted a cat. Your Y variable was your stress level on a score of 0 to 10. We had these four people in that video, Bill, Mary, Hans, and Chad. We said that Bill was an always taker, Mary was a complier, Hans was a defier, and Chad was a never taker. So let's just quickly review how we can look at some aspects about each of these people and use those aspects to tell what type of person they are in this context. Particularly, what we're going to look at is their X value or their treatment status based on whether or not their name came out of the hat. So if their name was pulled out of the hat and they were allowed to adopt a cat, we would say their Z equals 1. And if their name was not picked out of the hat, their Z would be equal to 0. And we're interested in what their treatment status was, whether or not they adopted a cat, given their number or their value of the instrument. Like I said earlier, we said that Bill was an always taker. How can I look at this and see that Bill is an always taker? Well, I can look right here and see that even though Bill did not win the lottery, even though Bill's name was not picked out of the hat, Bill chose to adopt a cat anyway. He found a way. So given that he adopted a cat, even though his instrument said that he would not be eligible to adopt a cat, he's an always taker. He's going to take the treatment whether or not his name gets picked out of the hat or not. Mary, the way you tell that Mary's a complier is Mary does exactly what she's told. Mary adopts a cat, she has an x of 1 if z equals 1. She does not adopt a cat, she has an x of 0 given that z equals 0. On the other hand, Hans is a defier for the opposite reason that Mary is a complier. If Hans's name gets pulled out of the hat, he does not adopt a cat, his x is 0. If Hans does not have his name pulled out of the hat, he finds a way to adopt a cat anyway, and his treatment value given that his z equals 0 is still 1. Chad, how can you tell that Chad is a never taker? You can tell that Chad is a never taker because even if his name gets pulled out of the hat, he is not going to adopt the cat. I think it's helpful when you're trying to figure out what type of person is what to sort of have a story in your head to help you keep track. So here's just a story based on this cat example. So Bill, maybe Bill is a cat lover. Bill absolutely loves cats. So even though you tell Bill, hey, you didn't win the lottery to adopt a cat, you won't be able to adopt a cat. Bill says, no, I really, really like cats. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to adopt a cat because I am an always taker. Now, Mary, Mary's a rule follower. She thinks cats are nice. She doesn't want to go as far as Bill, where if her name doesn't come out of the hat, she tries to get a cat anyway. She just follows what the instrument tells her, and so she's a complier. Hans, the way I think of the Hanses of the world, these are trolls. They're like, eh, cats are fine, but really I get way more enjoyment out of just messing with this experimenter. So whatever the experimenter tells me to do, I'm going to do the opposite. If you tell me I'm allowed to adopt a cat, I'm not going to adopt a cat. And if you tell me I'm not allowed to adopt a cat, well, then I am going to adopt a cat anyway. Chad is maybe allergic to cats. Maybe he only really entered the lottery because his friends and family around him are like, hey man, you should probably get a cat. We think a cat would be helpful. Chad is like, no, I don't think a cat is going to be helpful. I'll put my name into the lottery anyway. But if they pull my name out, there's no way I'm adopting a cat because I don't really like cats. I don't want a cat. I'm a never taker. Just to put this in more context, I put the correlation between X and Z here between the instrument and the treatment. And you can see that for Hans, his correlation is minus one. For Mary, it is one. And for both Bill and Chad, the correlation between X and Z is zero because whether or not their name gets drawn out of the hat has absolutely no bearing on whether or not they actually adopt a cat or not where Bill is going to adopt the cat no matter what, and Chad is going to not adopt the cat no matter what. So how might you go about trying to estimate the proportion of people in the population that are always takers, compliers, or never takers? Well, just to make it easy, first let's say that we have no defiers. That's one of our basic assumptions of an instrumental variable. And so for now, let's just assume we don't have any defiers. Now let's say that I tell you that 70% of lottery winners are adopting a cat, that means 70% of people whose name gets drawn out of the hat, they're going to adopt a cat. 
and 20% of the people who do not win the lottery, they find a way to adopt a cat anyway. And let's also say, maybe for the later part of this example where we'll go into the IV estimate, that lottery winners on average are less stressed than non-lottery winners by two. So notice right away, I don't tell you how many percentage of people are compliers, and I know for this IV estimate that I need to know my compliance rate in order to find my IV estimate or my local average treatment effect. And if you've snuck a look at this box, you can see it's 0.5. Let's figure out how we get to this 0.5 number. Well, if I know that 70% of lottery winners adopt a cat, that means 30% of people are never takers because 30% of people chose not to adopt the cat even though they won. The only people who will choose not to adopt a cat given that they won are never takers. Therefore, 30% of people in my sample are never takers. I said that 20% of lottery losers adopt a cat anyway. They find a way. I know who those people are. Those are people like Bill. And so there are 20% of people in the world that like Bill's. So if I have 30% never takers, 20% always takers, 0% defiers, the rest of the people must be compliers. That means I have 50% compliers. My instrumental variable estimate is the effect of Z on Y, which we said here is minus two, over the compliance rate, which we just found is 50% because I have 50% compliers. And I get an IV estimate of minus four. We just assumed that there were no defiers. So let's do a slightly different example where I introduce some defiers and let's see how that messes up our estimate. All I care about for an IV estimate is people whose Y or X changes based on their Z. The only people whose X changes based on their Z are compliers and defiers. So maybe 50% of people in the world are compliers. They have an average treatment effect of minus 1. 49% of defiers, maybe they have an average treatment effect of minus 2. So remember that the IV estimate is the effect of Z on Y over the effect of Z on X. So what is the effect of X on Z? Well, it's just the average x value given z equals 1 minus the average x value given that z equals 0. Well, the average of x given z equals 1, you have 50% of the compliers who take the treatment, 49% of the people do not take the treatment. On the other hand, for when z equals 0, 49% of people are defiers, and so they have a value of 1. And my effect of z on x is going to be 0 0.01, because the difference between x equals 0 and x equals 1 is that's going to increase the chance that I take treatment by 1% or 0.01. Similarly, if I do the effect of Z on Y, or if I regress Y on Z, I'm just going to calculate that as the average Y given Z equals 1 minus the average Y given that Z equals 0. So if Z equals 1, 50% of people are compliers, they have an average treatment effect of minus 1. 49% of people are defiers, so they do not get a treatment, because if they are instrumented, they don't take the treatment, and if you're not treated, you can't get a treatment effect. If z equals 0, the compliers don't have a treatment effect because they don't take the treatment when their z equals 0. But 49% of people are defiers, and so they have a treatment effect of minus 2 when z equals 0. Because when z equals 0, their x equals 1. When their x equals 1, they get this treatment effect of minus 2. So now if I take this difference, I get a positive number of 0.48. So when I do the IV estimate, when I divide the effect of z on y by the effect of z on x, I get 4.8 even though we said that both groups had a negative average treatment effect. So defiers can turn your treatment effect from negative into positive, and the more defiers you have, the worse this number is gonna be, worse meaning the further apart from the actual true treatment effect that this number is. So the key thing with defiers, the reason we have this assumption is because if you have defiers, you're gonna get a really screwed up IV estimate. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of the different types of people in an instrumental variable regression, particularly how you could calculate the proportion of people in each group and how defiers might throw off an IV estimate. This was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.